Doug Wyatt with Police Magazine. I'm here with Nick Greco, good friend, um, like me, a civilian police supporter. We're here at ILEDA 2019 in St. Louis, Missouri, a uh, gathering of the best and the brightest minds in yeah. law enforcement training. I know you've been doing some training here. Uh, I know that you're going to be taking some training here. Uh, it's, it's an incredible opportunity for us to get together and talk about some of the issues that you're an expert in. Uh, as a you know, as a as a medical provider, a mental health provider, um, one of the things that I really hadn't given a lot of thought to until we began a conversation is uh, the existence of bullying in law enforcement. We hear about bullying all the time. You know, we both have young kids. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a, it's a topic of conversation mm -hmm. among parents and school administrators and all of that and it's it's important we talk about that yeah and we address it in, in, in a meaningful way um, but you know we talk about b behaviors like that that continue on into adulthood and in particular in the law enforcement you know mm -hmm. universe where it's filled with hard charge and type a mm -hmm. you know get her done type of folks yeah. um, men and women who are you know they're physically fit they're you know mentally kind yeah. of sharp you know they and they feel like they're the, they're the, the, the alpha dog in the yeah. room. Now, there's a difference between being the hard-charging alpha dog and being a jerk mm -hmm. and being a bully. So mm -hmm. tell me about some of the things that you do to address bullying within mm -hmm. the ranks of law enforcement. Yeah, so you're right. A lot of bullying, we think, is on the playground only, and it, it, it does come into the workplace. And a lot of times with the hard-charging uh, individuals, you have people who kind of take that hard-charging and, and convert it over. So it becomes less of a fun joking around you joshing somebody just kind of like oh yeah you know poking and prodding them a little bit but it, it starts taking some things and they're a little more personal maybe it's a, a disability or something that uh showing you know they're uh, not strong in something and they're kind of pinpointing it out and that bullying uh starts kind of permeating over to other things uh, within the person's job and uh, it, it really affects morale and so uh, the bullying that you might see uh, you know and we think it's an older officer to a younger officer and a lot of times a younger officer because they're coming up maybe they have an FTO uh, they're a PPO whatever they're not going to say anything uh, but sometimes we we have officers who've been on five or six years and they're they're, they're bullying uh, each other so sometimes we're in the same uh, rank and file they're not they're not older or younger, they're, they're in the same group, and, and they may bully each other too. So uh, bullying is kind of something that is not always talked about. Mm -hmm. It's, well, we're just having fun. Well, that line of fun, it gets crossed between, you know, is it just fun, is it a joke, or is it harassment? And that's where, uh, you know, some of the training that we've been doing with some departments uh, we've gone to, we've looked at uh, various harassment, uh, discrimination, as well as uh, bullying and uh, sexual harassment. Yeah, you know, you, meant, yeah, you preempted my next question. Yeah. Now. You used the word harassment, and the thing that everyone thinks of right, right away when you use the word harassment is sexual harassment. Mm -hmm. And that can take a variety of different forms. Mm -hmm. um, you know, within the ranks, and also sexual harassment, you know, between an officer or by an officer to a, a civilian or a mm -hmm. member, of the, member of the community. Mm -hmm. um, it, but sexual harassment is, in fact, bullying. Yes. You know, it's 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 using, you know, it's power. It's power. Exactly. It's power. Yes. It's ex it's exertion of power and in a very negative way. And when you have uh, sexual harassment, a lot of times uh, we think of sexual harassment. It's going to be a peer to peer, or it's uh, superior to a uh, to a, somebody who is a subordinate. Uh, a subordinate. Yeah. Uh, we also see, and this is kind of a wake up call for some agencies third-party harassment so you have people vendors that come in to your agency and they're harassing mm -hmm. uh, your your employees so you have a salesman uh, that person comes in a salesperson they're harassing your records clerk well if the chief doesn't know about it the chief's still going to be responsible for that so zero tolerance policy has to be across the board so it's not just people within the department uh, it's people that come in and out that are um, you know citizens or uh, third-party uh, individuals. So those are things that uh, occur too. We talk about the the crossing the borderline of fun. Mm -hmm. You know, I've been in a lot of squad rooms. So have you. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, and going to the shooting range or doing mm -hmm. police training. And cop humor is sometimes extremely dark. Yeah. But it's 
it's it's one of the ways in which, and we've talked about mental health and you know that kind way of way to deal with it. It's one of the ways yeah. to deal with some really ugly, awful, nasty stuff mm-hmm. that you have to see on patrol, and you know some of the jokes that we hear. Like, yeah. Wow, I would never hear that out in public. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it's and it's therapeutic. Mm-hmm. It, it's helpful. It's useful. It's a, it's an appropriate exercise, um, but you know you have to educate your 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 team, your department as a police leader that you know there's a certain point at which something's not okay you know and you have to have the 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 you have to have the buy in of the troops that you have the ability to say okay this is the line and this is where we're going to get to mm-hmm. but we're not going to go beyond right right and you have to have those discussions you have to have the policy in place because you don't want to have any officer say well well i i didn't know the rules no everyone knows the rules the other thing is where's the fine line between the joke well the joke you know are you crossing the line when you make it personal? Are you crossing the line when the joke goes a little too far? So, mm-hmm. you know, before you make that joke, think about it. Is it something that you would want to repeat to somebody else? Would, would it be something that would be very offensive uh, outside of the room? And you, you, you have to, you know, you have to kind of know your audience as well. Right. The one thing is, you and I could be talking and there could be somebody down the hall that overhears us and is offended by what we talked about. We could be talking about, I don't know, Sports, Sports Illustrated swimsuit calendar and different things like that, and they could be offended. And that actually constitutes harassment as well because it creates a hostile work environment for them. Now, what, what's gonna happen with that? Probably you and I will be talked to, don't do that at work anymore. That, that'll be an end of it. But if we do retaliation, retaliation is, a, is another uh, thing that's a, a problem. That's where we have uh, individuals who retaliate and it creates a, another hostile work environment, but also does two things. One, it prevents people from coming forward, but also um, when, when people retaliate, it makes it, the work environment even worse where people won't want to come forward, won't want to talk about things. We can't, re- you know, by law, we can't retaliate, uh, but right. people do, uh, and that becomes a problem as well for the and whole department. And with retaliation, you also have, you know, the opening up of the agency to liability. You know, it's uh, a civil uh, liability. So, and beyond that, when you have these type of sexual harassment or any type of harassment or bullying, if any of this is public, it's a PR nightmare. Hard enough to get recruitment. Recruitment's been suffering in, in police agencies for a couple of years now. We don't need any more negative type stuff. We don't want to have this happen in departments. Right. And that's why a lot of departments are doing this type of training with us because they want to educate their officers on this uh, and make sure that the officers truly understand what is harassment now it's not to say we can't joke around and you know have some fun with each other we just have to make sure we don't cross that line that's where we go over some of the lines that could get easily crossed when you start talking race sex uh gender disability religion those are things you got to stay away from yeah in my adopted hometown of san francisco california we're still hearing about the cops and the text messages, mm. you know, because that all of those messages uh, and those officers are no longer with the department. Yeah. You know, they've for the, for for making jokes, mm-hmm. they lost their their livelihood, they lost their yeah. career, they lost their profession, yeah. and the department lost so much mm-hmm. um, public trust in what you called the PR nightmare yeah. that's still to this day being discussed. And that was years ago that mm-hmm. that happened. So yeah, I really appreciate the kind of training that you're yeah. doing here. And let me let me yeah. just add one more thing onto that. When you have when we talk about emails. Mm-hmm. You got to be careful. Uh, emails and text, that stuff can be subpoenaed. So that's why we always tell officers, just use your work phone for work. Uh, if you're, when you use your uh, personal phone, make sure it's on a break uh, because you don't want to get that subpoenaed. If somebody sends you a text or an email mm-hmm. and it's inappropriate, don't respond to it. Right. Because you can't prevent people from sending you that stuff, but you can prevent yourself from sending it anywhere else or responding to it. So, and then you can always uh, do a separate email later on, tell the person, yeah, please don't send me this stuff. Yeah. Once again, I really appreciate the type of training that you're doing, not just here at Ilita, but back in your home state and across the United States. Uh, This is important stuff. And, you know, until we began this discussion around bullying, I frankly hadn't given it a whole lot of thought. And I bet that there's a lot of cops out there that are kind of of the same mindset of, oh, I guess that really is a thing. So once again, Nick, thank you. Thank you. Doug Wiley, Police Magazine.